Welcome to Original Mind Zen Sangha. Today's Dharma talk is given by Andre Tesan Hallo. Tonight's talk is going to be called The Way is Always Open. I've heard it said before that dukkha, the way that is commonly rendered as suffering or um, dissatisfaction or disease or any number of ways, um, is not exactly what the Buddha had intended and that he was referring to an actual physical image of a cartwheel that had been stuck inside of the mud and uh, it had been gripped um, and therefore couldn't turn and no matter how much we tried the cart would stay still now this is different than, a, than an automobile of course because we would be able to spin our tires they would just spin but with a cartwheel it would the, the car you know the wheel itself just wouldn't move at all so there was no spinning action and i think it's such a powerful image and reminder of uh the buddha's power to evoke such a, a physical visceral act, uh, reaction from his audience and it was such an apt way of conveying the way that we often feel stuck trapped in in our own tracks um more often that these are tracks that this cartwheel is stuck inside of is the very ruts inside of the road itself, one that this probably cart had traveled many times. So it had just had created just as much of this path as perhaps any of these other carts. And in that way, we may remind us of how we're the author of our own frustration and our own greatest antagonist. To modernize uh, the Buddha's uh, perfect analogy there if I may I would I would think that it's almost as though dukkha refers to a clogged pipe a drainage pipe of course because for the most part supply pipes don't get clogged unless it's with uh, I don't know ice in, in, the, in the cold weather, which sure as hell the Buddha had no idea probably even existed. <laughs> the way is always open. We just fill it. We allow it to get clogged with all of this clutter of our own creation. And that clutters our emotions, our thoughts, our habits, our conditioning. But if when we look around, we realize that we're not bound by anything. I'm reminded of the great Chan story of the student who goes to the master and asks to be freed. And the Zen master says, well, who bound you? No one, of course, not even ourselves. And that's, that's the great reminder is that even when we feel the most imprisoned and we're under the most amount of stress and we feel as though we can't make any progress in our life whatsoever. These are just mental states. Now, granted, we might not be able to make any progress at our job or, or, or uh, with social relationships, but that's not the, 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 the source of our suffering. The suffering is internal. It's this blockage, which is a, a word I borrow from the great Alan Watts. He talks about how we are constantly blocking life without our realizing it and we're closing the window so to speak on experiences that we don't like rather than leaving the window open which is what the way of course is the buddha talks about the dharma as a path well a path is something that we tread something that we walk on and in the case of the buddha dharma it's always wide open just the question of whether or not we can see through the canopy that we've created inside of our own minds. These blockages aren't real. They have no reality to them whatsoever. We don't need to get a mental or emotional rotor rooter because 
these blockages don't exist. We just simply need to see through them. The power, of course, is that habit is so persuasive and, and insistent that it keeps drawing us back in at moment after moment after moment. The, for, for one second, according to our, our chance, they say, may we completely realize the, trying to, the true mind of all Buddhas. We do. Our, that's our natural mind, free and clear. But we get pulled into the mire, the quicksand of our, of our habit energy. And again, we're blocked, or we think we are, until we realize, wait a second, no, I'm not. It reminds me of this film. I don't, I don't know if it's brilliant or terrible. Uh, it, it was in the 1990s with Tim Robbins, and it's called Jacob's Ladder. And uh, it's a spinoff of Ambrose Bierce's uh, story of an, not story of an hour. Um, an, account, an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. And I don't want to give it away, but what happens inside the film is the, the character keeps waking from a series of one dreams in, in, into the next, and it leaves the audience completely bewildered. Hence why I think it might be a disaster of a film. But we never know where the, the character's real life is. For instance, in the, the, the first scenes, for instance, he, he's, he's married and he's having an affair with this woman. And then he wakes from this dream only to find that the woman he was having an affair with is actually his wife. And we, we don't know, we can't turn, you know, head uh, upside down, make any sense of this whatsoever. And yet that's kind of where we find ourselves. Uh, awakening from one dream into another. Our practice that was handed to us from, passed along to us from Sung San is don't know mind. Letting go of all of our conceptual thought or our attachment to conceptual thought, I should say. Because of course we have to use thought, discursive thinking. But it's like if somebody says, uh, this is a pencil and somebody says, no, it's a mechanical pencil. We're not going to get in an argument over it. It's unnecessary. Thank you. Sure. And they use it to write and then I hand it back. The way is free if we don't cling to these ideas and habits and conditioning. In the, the famous Gongan tradition, uh, Gongan tradition of China, that comes to us from China, the, uh, the expression is the gateless gate. And that represents perfectly, I think, the, 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 the double bind we think that we find ourselves in in life, which is we feel like we're stuck, and yet we're told that we're the ones who are sticking ourselves into the corner. So how do we get out of that? Well, the, the way is always open. There is no gate to this gate. The door swings wide open, and it's never locked. While that's all said and good, our practice is about bringing us back slowly and painfully often to the reminder that much of our lives we feel like that wheel stuck in the rut or that clogged pipe. To lift the cart is an impossible feat. But it's an unnecessary one because we realize that any way that we become stuck, not only further sticks us in the mud, right? But it's to subscribe to the very illusion that we're stuck in the first place, which we aren't. So around and around we go. Our practice is about letting go of those ideas about the world, our expectations of it, ourselves and other beings, and simply hear, smell, taste, touch, and feel, because those things are real. Right now I'm warm because I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. My throat is a bit dry and I've been talking for a while. Come back to that which is before us, unfiltered and unencumbered by all of these thoughts and conditions that pop up s seemingly on their own. Thank you.